Today I have the F800GS with me, BMW F800GS. As you know, uh, last year, 2018, BMW already phased out the 800 and 700 and replaced them with the 850 and 750GS, which a lot of BMW fans weren't happy about because they they loved the 800 and 700GSs. They felt that it was a better bike in general. I can't say anything about it because I haven't ridden an A50GS but I have with this 800. Now this 800 that I have here is 100% brand new. When the rental company lent it to me, this bike only had one kilometer on the odometer reading and that was when he took the bike to the petrol station to have it filled up before he handed over to me. So I have a 100% brand new experience with a brand new bike with this F800GS. Now the F800GS over here as you can as you can see is 100% stock because it's brand new. The only thing the only thing that the company added to the F800GS over here was the SW Motec uh, crash guards that you see at the front of the bike. Um, and that 100% stock bike can't, bike is powered by a 798 uh, cc parallel twin unlike the other gs's other bmws that you are you know familiar with it's not powered by a pair boxer uh, that people know bmw for it's parallel twin and it's actually a very good engine and uh, i kind of am annoyed by the fact that there's so many cars behind me anyway moving on the f800 gs when we are uh, discussing it, it will be 100% based on its uh, road mode setting. So, you know, the, the original unfiltered uh, setting. Bike has an amazing uh, throttle feel. Uh, it's throttle by wire. So when you throttle the bike, it's very smooth, very gradual. There's no herky jerkiness to the, to the power delivery on the F800 GS and I like it a lot because you can be in gear 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it doesn't matter. When you pull the throttle, it doesn't straight away open up the throttle valve and just let a lot of power in. It's very gradual, it's very, very uh, controllable. On the other hand, the F800 GS has a lot of power. Uh, for literally anything. If you want to do enduro, you want to do road riding, you want to do cross country, it has a lot of power uh, to go up, you know, even the steepest of hills. And on top of that, I am unable to test the top speed because I'm in Australia. As you know, Australia is being Australia right now and it's really hard to get away with testing the top speed but I can tell you for sure that the F800GS actually cruises at 120 kilometers an hour comfortably in third gear. Can you imagine how fast it can go in, in, in sixth gear? On paper, yes, it says about 180, 190 kilometers an hour, that's the top speed. All right, actually this is the second take. So let's get it over and done with. Handling wise, the bike has, at least on the road tires, a very nice thin profile, coupled with the fact that it's a parallel twin. It allows you to be very nimble. It leans in the corners very, very easily. And I like the bike, uh, the bike's handling characteristic a lot. Uh, the seating posture is upright. It's very comfortable, great view. There's a lot of uh, ground clearance on the F800GS as well. Uh, great for actually uh, going off-road compared to its F700GS cousin. However, the F800GS is a very heavy bike to manhandle. Of course, it's, no, no, it's a given. The GS line in general is just plain heavy. Uh, it's not a problem if you are a you know, reasonably young, fit, male who works out so without further ado maybe i will play a couple of clips of me riding the bike around and there goes another car it's fucking annoying 
and then I'll talk about the rest of the the bike in terms of its individual parts and components why I like about it what it has and then you guys will have a better idea at what you can do a bit of an addition to the things I said earlier that I missed out on mentioning the decision to use a parallel twin engine is a great design consideration since it allows you to ride the F800 GS into relatively narrow trails and to split in between traffic relatively easily. It's also great for people who want to canyon carve with their bike and drag some knee without worrying about smashing a boxer head into the ground or wasting extra money buying guts for their boxer engines like many R1200 GS owners do. The location of the fuel tank also helps in handling and as I will talk about it later, it is mounted centrally and low under the seat and actually makes your bike more stable the more petrol you have in there compared to other motorcycles where they are less stable the more fuel they have due to a higher center of gravity. The overall weight of the bike and slim profile of the bike was actually a great plus to have on highway riding with a lot of wind and heavy vehicles passing by preventing me from being blown around or needing to fight against the controls. Okay, let's begin with some of the parts we'll discuss about the bike. Um, unlike most, you know, uh, motorcycles where you have the fuel tank here, on BMW GSs, the fuel tank goes under the seat and your fuel cap is at the side of the back of your seat. Uh, tank is 16 liters. I think you can get about 180 to 200 kilometers on half a tank uh, cruising highways only or pretty much as much a highway as you can then the next part i really really like about any adventure bike is how the foot packs okay uh for the brake lever it's a uh, tooth the shifter isn't toothed but it's fine and of course on the foot packs itself when you buy it uh, this rubber bong can be removed so that it reveals the tooth foot pack for off-road use i really love this about any off-road bike the fact that the f800 gs has it is a, a wonderful plus so the f800 gs also comes with a very small windshield it's eh, passable but not really great on very long highway trips it's not adjustable either another good thing about but the good thing about the f800 gs is that the headlight comes with a a clear acrylic screen to protect it from bugs rocks little stones like that stock so it's a great addition to have on literally any adv bike uh, eventually, if some of you want to do a bit harder off-road, you might want to change it to a metal grill so that it will actually deflect larger stones because this will definitely not deflect large rocks but it's good enough for the street, it's good enough for light off-road. The brakes on the F800GS are a pair of brambles up at the front uh, very powerful brakes. I like the braking on the F800 GS. It pulls very well, it bites very well, uh, even at high speed. There's ABS on the F800 GS, but what I like the most about the ABS on BMW GSs is that they are disableable. So when you're off road, you can remove the ABS system to allow you to slide around the the you know soft ground which is a great addition to have apart from that uh com compared to the f700 gs uh f800 and 700s tend to be uh put on the small end of the gs series and they are recommended for a lot of uh beginner adv riders or at least intermediate adv riders but what makes the f800 gs Better than its 700cc cousin is the fact that it has 21 inch front wheels and 17 inch um, rear wheels which are bigger than the 700GS. 
On top of that, they are spoked, uh, which makes riding along bumpy terrain much better because they are much able to absorb impact and prevent your rims from getting dented. The, the tyres themselves are Touran's next stock. So they are very good tyres uh, on the road for touring. Although uh, if, if you were anybody who was going to buy an F800 GS, the first thing you're going to do is to take it off-road. I mean, if you want to, 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 to stay on the road, the Touran's next is a perfectly good uh, stock tyre to keep on the bike. Uh, on, in, in the wet, it's a very good tyre, but off the road, you might want to think about things like the TKC 80s, Anarchies, that sort of thing. So, unlike the 700 GS, 800 gets an upside down fork in the front, amazing uh, suspension, it feels great, very soft, very plush, at the same time, it's got very good control. The front is not adjustable, the rear, however, is this one uh, only allows rebound adjustments which is pretty much uh, all you really need and it's a great addition to have. So here we come to the cockpit. Now I like the fact that it's got a lot of information, it's not very cluttered. Uh, on the right side you just got your gear selector on the uh, center you also get to see the neutral as well. Uh, over here you've got your fuel gauge, temperature, then uh, your odometer, three meter clock and of course on the left side you've got a tachometer and speedometer. Uh, tachometers I like them to be you know uh, analog, the traditional needle pointing. Down here on the F800GS the speedometer is a analog uh, meter as well which it looks classy it's nice but i tend to prefer digital speedometers because it's easy to see the speed at first glance not that it matters uh, electronics like i said it's got abs uh, and the abs is disableable or changed uh, on this side then of course you've got your uh, hazard lights and stock you know, all the usual controls. On the right side, down here, at the very least, in the Australian market, uh, the F800GS comes with a uh, heated grips stock. So this is uh, this allows you to, to heat your grips. Uh, one push is half the heat, two pushes is full heat, and then another one to turn it off. Uh, let me turn off the battery right now. Uh, over here is your mode selection button. There are three modes on the F800GS, uh, Road, Rain, and of course Enduro. Now usually most of the time you'll be using Road mode, uh, which is great for everyday riding. Uh, the rain tends to bring down the, the uh, power a bit so that you don't accidentally wheel spin. And then for Enduro mode, it tends to give you a bit more low-end power uh, which is quite good for climbing hills. Another thing that a lot of people overlook when talking about the F800GS is that the kickstand does lock itself up as long as you're not on the bike. So it only will pull up. So if you imagine me trying to, to stand the bike, the bike upright and then pull off the kickstand without sitting on the bike the kickstand won't come up so there's a lock there and you need to be able to unlock the bike sit on it and then you'll be able to kick up the kickstand otherwise it, it, it locks in position preventing uh, somebody from you know dropping the bike or an Nov a novice rider from dropping the bike at least on the left side now as i said the fuel tank for the f800 gs as do most gs's do not show up on the central you know tank area where you would expect it to be but what replaces the tank under f800 gs is the battery so 
In terms of maintenance the, of the battery itself, this F800GS is a real breeze. Actually, all you need to do is remove these uh, four Torx screws, pull it off and the battery is right there sitting. Really easy to take out, easy to remove and put it back again. Maintenance for the F800GS in general is really, really easy. But if you have taken a look at pretty much any of the bolts and screws on the bike, even the side mirrors and the levers, you realize that they are all Torx, Torx screws. So if you don't have a Torx wrench, which is not only more expensive, you're kind of screwed. And uh, if you buy the bike secondhand without the toolkit, it's going to be a pain in the ass to actually maintain the bike yourself. So here I have removed the seat. The, the seat is one of the highlights of the F800GS. I really love the seat. It's soft, it's plush. It's very comfortable. I've been on it for the last 200 over kilometers or so and my ass doesn't hurt one bit. Now, removing the seat on the left side over here, which is quite easy to access, and I like that as well, the key slot is, is um, pretty much where all the electronics, the airbox, everything, it goes. So as you can see, maintaining at least a portion of the electronics is really, really easy on the F800GS, assuming you have the right tools, as I, said, as I have said before, the Torx wrenches and stuff like that. So all in all, the F800GS is a very, very good off-road capable bike. Um, stock, there definitely needs to be some changes made if you want to do it, like the tires, more crash bars, uh, hand guards, that sort of thing. But otherwise, it handles perfectly fine uh, on long road tours and I perfect perfectly recommend this bike to anybody that wants a middle weight or or close to large weight uh, adventure touring motorcycle